Hi folks, Carlton from the Pharmacy Seeds Network. Uh, for a long time I've been thinking about doing a video about frequencies and resonance. And every time I thought about how to do the video, there are so many pieces to incorporate that I felt like it was really hard to get a handle on it and, and put it into a video and keep it short and clear and concise. So uh, over time the more I thought about it and the more I've recognized more and more correlations between frequency and resonance and everything else science related and plant and ha animal and human health related and so on and so on and so on uh, I decided I would do a playlist of them and so this will be the first in the series I have no idea how many videos it's going to take uh, given that my research is ongoing it may never end till I end and who knows when that'll be <laughs> anyway uh, so I'm just gonna go over some basic concepts um, discuss little pieces of some uh, a list of things that I wrote down here and just kind of tie some basic things together and then as time goes on uh, if you want to ask questions down below I can address uh, specific questions or uh, or as time goes on I'll try and uh, like break off into sections and and do a video on a section of some of these some of these concepts this is by no means a complete list uh, this is just my basic list to get me started anyway without further ado frequencies and resonance I guess I'll start by saying that um, for a long time ever since I was a kid I was very interested in radio um, by the time I was 12 or 13 I was bringing home CB radios from yard sales and trying to build my own antennas I had some limited success on that but I did have some success uh, when I got a little bit older, I when I was 14, I went and took an amateur radio class and took and passed the technician exam and got my amateur radio license. Um, I got a couple of radios that were given to me, and uh, so I experimented with building antennas and with radios and frequencies and all that kind of stuff since I was a kid. Since then, I am now an amateur class, uh, uh, extra class amateur radio operator, um, so I've passed the highest amateur radio exam you can take. And so I have a pretty good understanding of frequencies and resonance and all of these electromagnetic things that sort of tie together with this. So from that understanding and also from understanding about plants and animals and all sorts of other stuff, but I just kind of wanted to, to help you understand uh, how much radio background I have. Uh, in amateur radio, uh, I build pretty much most of my own antennas. I usually don't buy antennas, I build them and those antennas have to be tuned to the frequency that I want to work with and so uh, it's all about matching frequency and resonance of an antenna to make an antenna effective as a radiator for RF energy or radio frequency energy and so that same concept applies to everything up and down the radio spectrum uh, so when I say radio spectrum let me just throw up a chart here quick And you can see uh, that the radio spectrum is quite wide and goes from quite a low frequency range to a very, very, very high frequency range. And that everything from sound to radio to vision to infrared to ultraviolet to thermal to you name it, every kind of energy is somewhere on the electromagnetic spectrum. And so you see everything has a frequency and a resonance to it. I guess that's what I'm trying to get to. Okay, so started out with radios, have always played with radios, I still today play with radios, build my own antennas, and participate in my lo local amateur radio club. It's a lot of fun, a lot of good people, very technically oriented and talented people from all walks of life. Um, so, a lot of fun. So if you're uh, interested in amateur radio, I recommend you check out our website at omarclub.org. That's O-M-A-R-C-C-L-U-B dot O-R-G. And uh, also you could check out our YouTube channel. We haven't updated that in a while, but there's a few videos there. Um, so you could check that as well. Uh, that's OMARC, the Overlook Mountain Amateur Radio Club YouTube channel. And I'll put uh, links in the description for both of those. So that's out of the way. Okay, so rocks are crystals. They're also resonant. Um, 
crystals are used or used to be used until uh, some new technologies evolved to control the frequency of a radio. You would have a crystal and you would beat a certain frequency against that crystal and it would give you a, a mixed frequency back and you would take that and add modulation to it and then you would transmit that signal. That signal will travel up the wire up to the antenna which is a radiator because it's resonant that would radiate into the air at virtually light speed and someone else who had a resonant antenna elsewhere could capture a portion of that radiation radiation and receive your signal. So uh, rocks and crystals tie right into frequency and resonance. Insect wings, believe it or not. Insect wings are resonant and actually if you look in a microscope on most insects wings as you zoom in closer and closer you can see that each little wing uh, each little like hair like structure on the wing has divided hair like structures coming off it again and again and again and those are all resonant at different frequencies and so there was a guy in Russia I'll put a link to the video who built a flying machine out of insect wings with no propellers or engines or anything like that he used insect wings and resonance in some form or fashion to build an actual flying machine so um, there's that um, let's see microwaves and water microwaves are in the gigahertz frequency range microwaves are about 2.495 megahertz or uh, 2.495 gigahertz, I'm sorry, or 2495 megahertz. And interestingly enough, microwaves work by heating water. Uh, that frequency is resonant with that of a water molecule, and it actually vibrates the water molecule, and that's what creates the friction and heat that's produced in a microwave. Um, so, interesting correlation. Obviously, you can see why being exposed to microwaves on the human body, as we're 70 to 90 percent water, would be very dangerous for you and that's why microwaves are very dangerous for us uh, let's see Wi-Fi interestingly enough most Wi-Fi in the 2.4 gigahertz range is right close to that water resonant range um, and although Wi-Fi is technically non ionizing radiation in other words radiation not concentrated enough to cause um, radiation damage basically that's a whole other topic but uh, even though it's non ionizing there have been some studies and some research done that show that uh, close proximity to these, including your cell phone and that sort of thing, actually uh, can heat tissue. And they think that over time that that tissue heating might be what uh, helps seem to make this interesting correlation between cancer and cell phone use. That's a whole other topic. We won't get into that. Um, but it's something interesting to think about and to research on your own if you have interest in that. Let's see. Uh, electromagnetics. Okay, so all resonant frequency stuff is pretty much pretty much all of it is an electromagnetic signal that means it has an electrical component and a magnetic component um, I'll do a whole nother video on electromagnetics I think but just be aware that there's an electromagnetic component to all of these frequencies and resonances all the way up and down that spectrum scale uh, let's see sound waves are, are a resonant frequency um, light is an example uh, infra, infrasound is an example. Some very interesting studies have been done on infrasound. Uh, we'll do a whole video on that, I think, because that's a whole interesting topic of discussion all by itself. Infrared, uh, most of you may know about infrared cameras and the ability to use night vision. That's based on, uh, based on the end of the spectrum that is actually part of the light spectrum, and it's actually uh, just above I think it's just no just below uh, the red spectrum of light and so it's not visible to the human eye but it is visible to uh, sensors that are able to detect that particular spectrum range so infrared ultraviolet is another one um, interestingly enough interestingly enough ultraviolet has light has also been shown to increase the polyphenol production in plants in other words the plant essential oils and medicinal compounds that plants make uh, ultraviolet light has been shown to uh, improve that performance um, even in cannabis there are research studies in cannabis that, that show that um, interestingly enough uh, I've heard the discussion that uh, they think that the reason that some of the um, the more medicinal plants that are produced at higher altitudes 
are better is because of less atmosphere in the way and that may be the reason for it that they're exposed possibly to more ultraviolet light than those at lower elevations. I don't know if anyone's confirmed that theory but certainly interesting to consider. Um, and let's see, fungi, uh, lightning. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Paul Stamets in one of his videos talks about uh, fungi responding to electrical signals, especially lightning, and growing faster in the presence of high voltage electrostatic stimulation. So that's interesting. And of course that's frequency dependent. Um, see the research on that. I don't know if I have a link around for that somewhere, but maybe I'll try and dig one up. Um, anyway, basically just wanted to introduce you to the idea that everything has a frequency and a resonance. Every object that has any dimension to it, any physical dimension to it, is resonant with some frequency. And so there's a lot to be studied and learned and understood in this field. Um, there is a lot of interesting ongoing research. There is a lot of interesting past research. And uh, there's a lot to think about. So uh, on that, frequencies and resonance. Be thinking about it when you're walking around. Uh, maybe it'll change your perspective on things a little bit. I'll uh, do more videos in the future on this. I would love to hear of any, any questions or comments you have. Um, I hope this has uh, been a decent introduction to the topic. And I hope it opens the door for more discussion. And uh, I welcome and look forward to your questions and comments. And uh, yeah, I'll be looking forward to making some more videos and break some of these things down a little bit more. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network.